What's up guys, this is Casey Underhill and I wanted to show you a blender tutorial today. This is what we're going to be making. This is our beer with lime. Uh, the very first thing that I want you to do is I want you to go to Google and I want you to just type in beer bottle with lime. You're going to probably find Corona. I think that's the one that does it the most often. But uh, just find a nice picture of one or you can just go to find an open bottle of beer or something. We're just going to need a reference image for the background that we can make our beer bottle off of. So once you have that, go ahead and unpause my video, come back and finish this tutorial. While you guys are out searching, maybe I can go to my 3D view and I'm going to turn on my screencast keys for you. So if at any time you have any questions on what I am typing on my computer or pushing on my mouse, you'll see it right down here in the bottom left corner. So, if you do not have this toolbar open right here, hit the N key, that will open and close that toolbar, and we're going to scroll on down to the background images. We're going to click that, add image, and we're just going to find that beer with lime. You're going to have to hit the open, I already had mine loaded, but once you have that, just put your background image that you found on Google, put it in there, and do not mess with anything else, it'll be fine. I'm going to go ahead and close this window, and the first thing I want to do is delete this cube, or actually the first thing I want to do is get rid of these stupid arrows, they just kind of get in the way, so let me click my little button here, and they're gone. Now let me delete my cube and delete my lamp. Now if I hit the 5 on the numpad, and 1 on the numpad, you can see there's my background image. If you don't hit 5 on your numpad, if you're not in orthographic view, you will not see your background image. If you're sitting here wondering, I don't see my background image, it's because you're not in orthographic view. Actually, when I was a beginner, it took me quite a long time to figure that out. Nobody seems to explain it because it's just second nature after you learn it. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I want to put my 3D cursor right down here at the bottom of the label for the bottle. Obviously, yours might be a little bit different than mine. That is perfectly fine. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and shift A and we're going to add a mesh circle. Now my vertices are already set to 16, yours are probably set to 32. It uh, just kind of depends on what you're using the beer bottle for. I'm using it to append to another scene, a bigger scene, so I want less, um, I want less geometry in it, so I lower it to 16. If you're going to use this beer bottle just as uh, itself for an image, uh, you might want to leave that up to 32. It's just up to you. You can play around with it and see what you like. Just make sure it is an even number. Uh, it, it makes it, if you look at the top view, it makes it so the vertices right here line up with the Y axis, which makes it a little easier to deal with. So let's go ahead and scale this inwards to match our bottle dimensions. Tab in edit mode, and what I'm gonna do first is extrude it down on the Z axis. Right about here. Extrude it down again. Scale it in a little bit. Just a very tiny bit here. Just going to scale that way in. So we have just this little dot here. I'm going to hit my F key to make a face. That's just going to close that off. Now back in my front view, I'm going to hit Z to go into wireframe mode. A to unselect everything. And then B will give me a box select mode. So I can click and drag to select all of these vertices. While we're in wireframe mode, it'll select both the front and the back. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for any of you beginners out there. Sorry if you guys are bored, if you're sort of intermediate people. Just bear with me here. I'm going to extrude this all the way up to the top of my label. I'm going to extrude this right where the bottle starts to bend, which in this case looks like it's right about on the x-axis, which is great. So now I'm just going to extrude it in small increments. Uh, for this particular picture, I can kind of use the... Um, grid on the background to uh, scale where I'm at. You guys might not be able to do that. Just toy around with it. The idea is you just don't want your your round edges to look jagged at all. So make sure that you're, if, you, if it looks jagged in the end, then you might have to go back through and redo this. But we're just extruding with E and scaling. And we'll go right to the top of this one. Scale that one in. Okay, so now that we're right here, you can see there's just a little bit of foam in here. Uh, hopefully, I can make that just a little bit clearer in this image. Uh, I'm not going to say that this image is perfect by any means, but uh, maybe we can improve on it as we go. We'll see. Maybe, maybe not. 
Anyways, I want to leave a nice gap for that foam, so I'm going to extrude all the way up right about here. And I want to scale that in to match the width. And now I can extrude straight up to the mouth of the beer bottle. Scale that one in. And now we're at the mouth. So let's bring this up, scale it out, bring one right about there. Scale this one inwards. Bring that one up, bring that up, and right about, yeah, okay, that looks, that looks good enough. Alright, so, now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and hit A to unselect everything, hit A again to reselect everything, go to Mesh, Normals, Recalculate Outside, and that's going to make everything look nice and shiny and bright on the outside which is exactly what we want the dark stuff is now on the inside of our beer bottle so now what I want to do I'm going to go to my wireframe mode again and tap back into edit mode and I just want to select all of the parts that are going to have the beer in it and I want to shift D to duplicate it and left click I believe yeah that brings it just the same object but it's it's different vertices on the inside something like that <clears throat> anyways we're just going to hit P selection and that's just gonna make it its own object so now if I tab out and select it aha that, that's exactly what we want so let's go ahead and tab in edit mode for that we're going to need to scale it inwards just a bit, just a little bit. Because you can see it is longer than it is wide. So it's going to scale it more this way than it is this way. So what we're going to do to fix that is just scale it all around a tiny little bit until this top and bottom is not touching the glass. And then we're going to scale, control, shift, Z. That's going to scale it on the X and the Y, but not on the Z axis. So we're getting this way. And we're getting this way, but we're not getting this way, if that makes any sense to you guys. Once we have it to where it's just not touching the glass at all, we're going to go ahead and uh, unselect all the vertices. Right here at the top, we want to do our box select mode right here. Extrude it one more time and scale that all the way in. Something about there. Hit F to make a face. And then if you just want to grab that on the z-axis and pull it down a little bit so we've got that little liquid sort of dip in the middle it's really not a big deal but if i don't put it in there somebody's going to complain so there it is anyways let's tab out of edit mode and make sure you hit smooth shading on the inside and the outside of the bottle and you can see we're starting to actually look like a beer bottle woohoo yay okay so with the outside bottle selected we're going to add a modifier. It's going to be our solidify modifier. And let's turn that down to uh, about a 0.5 works. We want to do that with just the outside of the bottle, not the inside of the bottle. So now that we have that, I'm just going to go ahead and hide that with the little eye icon here. It'll still render, but we just won't see it in our 3D viewport, which is what we want. So I'm going to go back to my front view, and let's go ahead and start adding some of the materials. Let me switch to my Cycles Render here. Tab in Edit Mode. And the first thing I want to do is add my label. So I'm going to hit Z to go to my wireframe. And I want to select these faces. If I click on the face select, make sure that those are the faces that you have. <laughs> let's go to our Materials tab. Click New. We're going to rename this Label. And this one is fairly, fairly easy. Let's go to our compositor. Click on our materials tab. I'm going to add a texture, image texture. And you guys might have to look up beer labels, beer bottle labels, uh, or you can make your own. It's up to you. That's what I did is I made my own. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Should be in my random folder. Beer label. Just going to plug that into my diffuse and I'll show you what my beer label looks like here so you can get an idea. And there it is. It's got the nutrition facts, 
I wrote a little hilarious paragraph for no reason. Uh, you can do whatever you want with it. That's just what mine is. So <clears throat> now that we have that, the only thing we really have left to add is a glossy shader. We're going to set that to a 0.5 roughness. Um, what the roughness value actually does with these nodes, with a glossy node, is... Uh, oops, I set it to 0.5. I, I, I wanted 0.05. The lower this number is, the more mirror-like effect you get. Um, so at like a point two, where it was set by default, we get sort of a, a less shiny effect with the glossy shader. Whereas 0 0.05, we're going to get a much shinier, uh, more detailed gloss to it. So let's go ahead and add a mix shader. Plug the glossy into the bottom, the diffuse into the top. And for the factor, let's go to 0.1. And that's just going to give us a little bit of gloss. Actually, let's go with point, point, let's try point 0.3. That might be too much. I might have to come back and change it. Uh, this factor on the mix shader, really it's just the smaller the number, the more it uses the diffuse shader. The higher the number, the more it uses the glossy shader. So at 0, you're going to be using nothing but the diffuse. And at 1, you're going to be using nothing but the gloss. Uh, so you can adjust that accordingly. Sometimes you just got to play around with it to make sure that you get it proper. And I think we're pretty much done with the beer bottle label. Let's go ahead and go back to our default view. And make sure that you hit this little assign button while you have these vertices selected. Uh, it's not really going to matter here in a second anyways, but anyways. Uh, let's go ahead and add a new material. Click new and we're going to rename this one to glass. Ta -da. Now, I'm going to hit A to select everything. I'm going to hit B, and then hold down Shift while I select these faces, and that will deselect them. So now I have everything but that label selected, and I'm going to hit Assign on the glass material. That's going to give the glass to all of these parts of the bottle and the label to these parts of the bottle. You know what? Actually, I forgot something for the label. Let me go ahead and select these again. We forgot to unwrap this. So tab out from edit mode, go back to object mode, hit control A and apply the scale. And then we'll go tab back in, hit U, and we're going to cylinder project. Let's go back to our compositor and let's make sure that this fits over the entirety of our beer bottle label. So I'm gonna scale this on the Y to make sure it fits. Grab it on the Y, scale it on the Y, and there we go. So we really don't have to do that with any of the other parts of the bottle. We don't have to worry about it. It's just this label part. We will eventually when we do the foam, but we'll get to that here in a bit. Anyways, we can tab back out of there if we want. Let's go back to our glass material, and we'll go ahead and go back to our compositor. And the first thing we want to do is actually delete this diffuse by hitting X. Because what we want is a shader, glass shader. And if you plug that in, you're like, okay, well, my glass is done. But it's not. We're going to make our glass kind of a fancy glass. And you're probably going to hate me for it. But we're going to mix that with a transparency shader. And I hope that was supposed to be the bottom. I think it is. Let's go ahead with a mix shader. Oops. Connect the transparency into the bottom. Now what we want to do here is add two add shaders. So let's add one here. We can shift D to duplicate that add shader. We're going to plug one add shader into the top of the other add shader. Because now what we're going to do is add input light path. Now this is going to determine what of the glass, what parts of the glass actually get rendered. Which in this case we want shadow ray into the top of the add shader, diffuse ray into the bottom of the add shader, and glossy ray into the bottom of our other add shader. So that's telling our renderer or our camera that basically we don't want the singular ray, we don't want the reflection, we don't want transmission, the ray length, the ray depth, we don't want the camera ray. Um, it's just going to mix it together with our glass and our transparency for different effects. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's very important to use this because you get much more realistic 
uh, lighted glass than you do if you just use the glass shader. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that last add shader into the factor of the mix shader. Oops, just move these around a little bit so I can keep track of them better. And the last thing we wanna do is make sure that our glass is all the way white and same with our transparency and it's already there okay so I believe that we're pretty good on that let me go back to my default and I have not added lighting yet so if I want to go to my world texture or my world tab here click use nodes and I'm just going to use a simple environment texture HDR image if you don't know what an HDR image is look it up on Google um, it's really confusing it's for photographers I just use them for lighting if you would prefer to use like a sun lamp or set up some studio three-point lighting systems something like that you can I just find that this is a lot easier I'm gonna go ahead and set my strength of it to three and let me go ahead and turn this to rendered view and see what we come out with actually let me go to my render settings and make sure transparency is turned on Alrighty, so this is what our glass is looking like right here. Um, obviously, if we can see our background image, and I guess we don't really need our background image anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off so I can see just the glass. And we're looking pretty good. I think our glossy shader might be a bit high on that label, so we might turn that down a little bit. Uh, don't worry that this is white slash gray, whatever you want to call it. This is that inner part of the bottle that we have not materialized yet. That's perfectly fine. Uh, really, we just want to make sure that the label is turned out okay. And the top of the bottle is showing some of the background HDR image, or it's showing something that looks fairly, fairly unique and similar to glass, which it is. So, everything's looking fairly good. Let's go ahead and go back to solid view. And let's fix that label while we're thinking about it. Go to my label, go to compositing. And I'm just going to lower it down by 2.2 on that mix shader. That should be perfectly fine. Okay, so next we want to get to the actual beer inside. So I'm going to hit Z to go to my wireframe mode. Select that inside. And I want to add a new material. Name it beer. So let's go to our compositor. And we want to actually get rid of this diffuse shader again. We're going to add another glass shader. And this time we actually are just going to plug it directly into the surface. Now for the IOR, I like to keep it at a 1.33. That's actually the IOR of water and not beer. I'm sure there's something different for beer. I'm not looking it up. It really isn't a huge deal. Uh, if you want to look that IOR value up, there's actually set values for certain liquids that you can use that are probably more realistic, but this works perfectly fine for me. That's what I'm going to do. The first thing I want to do is I want to add a new shader, and this one, whoops, let me find it here. This one, we're looking for volume absorption. Ta -da. This is probably one that you've never seen before. Perfectly all right but we want to set our density to 65, I believe. And we want to set our color to something sort of amber-ish. It might depend on what kind of beer you're actually making, but this is pretty much just gonna be the color of whatever beer you're making. We're just gonna plug that right into the volume. And what this does is the volume absorption uh, tells the light passing through the bottle or through that actual liquid in there which is actually glass not liquid at all but it'll tell that light uh, how how much depth that liquid is supposed to have it's another one that's really hard to explain but you just got to trust me on this um, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my front view and go to my render view now this one you really have to tweak a lot because the coloring never wants to turn out right as you can see here the color is basically black. Ugh, I hate when it does this. Okay, let me maybe turn this to a like a bright yellow color. 
Aha! That gave me the color I was looking for. The uh, volume absorption node, really what happens is the uh, if you click on HSV in the color, the saturation is what gives it most of its color. So if that saturation gets turned way, way down, you can see how it affects the uh, color of the actual beer. That is actually not bad. I kind of like that. Uh, I don't know. Okay, that's a little too much like pee. Yeah, yeah, all right. But if you just play around with these hue saturation values, you can see my value had to be turned all the way up to one to get a color. And anything less than that pretty much just gives me black. Anything else you can just kind of mess with. Let's say you want to make some kind of green liquid or you can make a blue or a red. And then we're just going to go right on back to our amber yellowish color. Just right around in here. Something, yeah. Oh, too much in a green. Okay, I'm going to turn my saturation down a bit. Alrighty. And that is pretty much it for our actual beer. So if you want to play around with the colors in this volume absorption, go ahead and feel free to do so. Uh, you can make any kind of drink that you really want to. It is not too difficult to make liquid in a beer bottle. This is, this is it. Three nodes. Two nodes if you don't count the material output. That was much easier than you thought it was, right? Okay, so next thing we want to do is actually probably add the foam to our glass. So let's go ahead and click that and tab into edit mode. And I'm going to deselect all of my faces. And select these faces right here, right up above the beer. And I want to go ahead and unwrap these do by cylinder projection. And let's go ahead and create a new material. New. I'm just going to name this foam. Dun, dun, dun. Come on. There it goes. Okay, so let's go back to our compositor again. And let's add a texture, image texture. Open that up, and let's see, where did I put that one at? Mm -hmm. Drink foam, PNG is what I'm looking for. Okay, let me show you what I did with the drink foam picture. Maybe if it never pops up. Will it pop up? Find out next time on Blender Tutorials with Casey Underhill. <laughs> ah, my computer's junk. Sorry about this, guys. Give it a couple seconds to load. Aha, here we go. Okay, so this is basically all I've done. I went into GIMP, the photo image editor, and I just took some grunge brushes with whites and grays, just splattered it all over this. Just splattered it all over. Now, it's important with this foam to make sure that there's some empty space at the bottom and some empty space at the top or else you're going to create like a hard edge or a hard seam, and we don't want that. Um, <coughs> I'm sure you can find some grunge textures like this out there. Uh, try cgtextures.com. I made this one myself. It was really quick, really easy. It took like five seconds, but this is pretty much the image that you're looking for. We're just going to plug that right into the diffuse shader. And let's see what we're looking at here. Oh, we didn't assign it. Let me make sure I assign that. Aha! So this is what we're looking at here. Let me go ahead and... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Am I, in? I was in uh, edit mode. Aha! Here it is. Since we unwrapped it, we want to make sure we grab those UVs and we want to scale those to the size of our actual foam image here. Grab it on the Y, scale it, whoa, 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 scale it on the Y, right there. Uh, maybe if I squeeze that down just a bit. Grab it on the Y, pull it down. Ha, ah, there we go. So obviously you can see that there's that big black outline. We don't want that. That's why this is a PNG image. This is a transparent background. So we're going to make that transparency now. 
Let's go ahead and add a shader, mix shader, and plug that in between here. And we actually want our diffuse shader on the bottom. And we're just going to plug the glass into the top shader. Aha, there we go. See, now we have our nice glass on the top, glass on the bottom, and the foam in between. Much, much better. Now I am going to move these UVs just a bit. It looks like the foam is a little, a little high. Ah, oh, that's perfect. Right up above the beer. And we're still getting lots of glass up here. Oh, yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So this wasn't too hard. I kind of ran into a little issue there. Uh, all we did was change that transparent shader that I told you to add into a glass shader. Uh, if you want to add all the fancy stuff from the actual glass, uh, you basically just do that whole thing and then plug the mix shader into the mix shader here. But it's really not all that necessary. Just added steps that we don't really need. So let's go ahead and go back to our default here. And I think everything is done except the lime. Oh, and the condensation. That's not too hard. Okay, let's tap out of edit mode. And actually tap back in edit mode. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on my vertice select mode. Select these two here. Go mesh, snap, cursor to selected. And that's going to put my 3D cursor right in the center. It's exactly where I want it. So let me tab out of edit mode. Shift A, and I'm going to add mesh UV sphere. Okay, so I want to just scale this way down <coughs> so that it kind of fits. Actually, no, no, no. Let me get this about halfway, maybe. You just kind of have to eyeball this a little bit. It's not the easiest thing to do. Let's go ahead and tab in edit mode. We're just going to cut this right in half. I'm going to cut this UV sphere in half. Let's go ahead and grab your box select. Select all that and vertices. Uh, let's do that one more time. We, we don't actually want a half. Um, I just hit numpad slash that hides everything except for what I'm working on in edit mode. It's a really nifty tip if you want to work on things more efficiently. So I'm just going to select these ones here and delete those. So now we have like a wedge, a corner. That's pretty much what we're looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so... While we're in here, let's go ahead and make our faces for this. Let's uh, grab these two vertices and hit F. That'll make a little line. And I think we should be able to hit Alt and right click. Yeah! And then we hit F and that makes a big face. Ta-da! Super easy, right? That was our line. Now, one more thing we do want to do is we want to select everything, go to face select mode. We're just going to unselect these two faces. And we want to, let's see, let's go right about here. We just want to extrude these faces out a little bit and then also scale that on the Z just a tad. A little bit right there. And that's pretty much it for our line. Make sure you hit the uh, smooth shade. And I think one last thing we need for this is a modifier, edge split modifier. Where's that at? Edge split. Ha. So whenever you smooth an object and you get that weird where it's all glossy and doesn't look uniform and you lost a lot of detail, the edge split clears that up. As you can see, it makes it look nice and crisp but also gets rid of like the crazy geometry on the inside here. Uh, that's exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and hit our slash key on the numpad. That'll bring it right back. And we want to just start scaling this down a little bit and lining it upright. Let's uh, see where we're at here. A little bit big yet. And I want to rotate it just a bit. Pull it down, 
maybe bring it up and scale it out. Okay, right. Close. Right about there. Not about right. Ah, I'm sticking out the side. Uh, scale that down a bit. Still sticking out the side. Grab that on the Z. Still sticking out the side. What did I do? Rotate it back up a little bit. Oh, uh, now we're floating. Let's make sure we turn our uh, click on a right click on our bottle here, and make sure we turn on our solidify modifier again. And we're trying to just we might have to scale this on the Z actually to make this look right. Uh, we just want to get it sitting in here without like overlapping a lot of the geometry that we have here. Overlapping that bottle. Ah! Maybe right, right there. Aha! Okay. Now we're looking like something. <laughs> okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. So, what we want to do now is tab into edit mode one more time. Now, if you want to, I suppose you could hit the slash on your numpad and bring this to your separate view. And we just want to select these two faces here. Make sure you tab out, go back into object mode, and control A, apply the scale. Tab back into edit mode, we're going to U. And project from view, I think, is what works best. And now select everything else. And unfortunately, we're going to have to deselect all of these little edges. Uh, this is the boring part, guys. Unfortunately, there are no tricks to doing this. Sometimes you can hit Alt to get all of these to go away. But usually it just messes me up. Okay. So, we just want to find something that's kind of straight on. That's decent enough. And we just want to unwrap that one again, project from view. And one more time, I'm going to have to select all of these inner edge pieces one more time. Do, do, do. Come on. Maybe I should uh, fill this time with a joke. How did the mathematician get rid of his constipation? He worked it out with a pencil. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Alright, anyways, let's go ahead and project from view. Make sure you're looking at these straight on when you project from view. Uh, projecting from view is going to project the UVs directly the way that you're looking at it. It's kind of hard to explain as well, so if you have any questions, make sure you put them down in the comments of the video. I'll try and answer you um, as best I can. Anyways, I think we're all unwrapped here. So, let's go to our materials, add a new. I'm going to name this one Lime Inside. And add another one, new Lime Outside. So, for the Lime Inside, we're just going to assign these two. Then we want to select everything, deselect those ones, and assign these to lime outside. Okay. So for lime inside, let's go to our compositor. Add a texture, image texture. Plug that into our diffuse. And let's open our texture. Should be my random folder again. Lime hole. And let me try and show you what this actually looks like here. This is the lime. So let me go to my... Doo -doo -doo, tab into my edit mode. 
select that and what I'm looking to do with the UVs here is just get as much of this inside edge as you possibly can if you have to scale it a little cattywampus that's perfectly fine just as long as you don't stretch it and skew it too much oh that is looking beautiful that is unwrapping nice nice Let me show you what that looks like in our rendered view here. And there it is. Look at that. That is nice. That is a delicious looking lime, right? <laughs> Anyways, what we're going to do now is I'm going to shift E to duplicate my image texture. And I'm opening a normal map. So let me go back to those textures. Random. Lime hole normal map. If you don't know what a normal map is, or if you don't know what a specularity map is, uh, check around on Google a little bit. There is a program called Crazy Bump. Um, you can download a trial version of Crazy Bump that works really well, where basically all you do is plug in your original image and it will generate a normal map, which gives you like a the bumpy texture kind of look to it. And it will give you specularity maps, which will give you the lighting, the gloss effects to your image. Uh, they're it's very, very useful, very, very handy. I would highly suggest purchasing this if you have any any future ambitions for Blender. It's it's going to be a lifesaver. There are plugins for Photoshop and GIMP, I think, that'll do normal maps and maybe specularity maps, but they are just not that you can have specularity and normal maps in seconds with with uh, Crazy Bump. So, anyways, let's go ahead and add a vector normal map. We're going to connect the color of our normal map texture into the color of the normal map. And then we'll connect that into the normals of the diffuse shader. And that's just going to make it a little bit extra bumpy. So now we're going to add our shader, glossy shader. And we're going to mix that with our diffuse shader. So add shader, mix shader. And glossy on the bottom. Whoops. Glossy on the bottom. And then also want that normal map into the normal map of the glossy. And we want to duplicate our image texture one more time. And we're going to open our specularity map for it. Random. And lime hole spec. So now from that one we are going to go to converter color ramp. And plug our image texture color into the factor of the color ramp and the color of our color ramp into the factor of the mix shader. Whew, that's a mouthful to say. One thing that I did forget to do uh, down here with the normal map image texture, where it says color flat single image, where it says color, we want to click that drop down box and change that to non color data. Now we've got that bump going. So now that we have our specularity map, the uh, Black to white is basically just going to control how much gloss of shader that we get. So if we click on the white side, and then we click on that color down here, and we lower it, we'll just get much less gloss. I also think I want that to be a little bit more mirrored. So my glossy shader, I'm going to turn that down to a 0.05. And I need a little bit less lighting, I think, a little bit less specularity. Let me turn that color ramp down a little bit more. Okie dokie, I think that's looking pretty good. <clears throat> so this setup that I have here is a very useful, basic setup for textures. This is your normal texture here, or your, I guess not normal texture, this is your image texture, your base image texture. This is your specularity texture, and this is your normal map texture. And you're basically just going to connect all of these up and that's going to make your textures for 90% of the things that you make in Blender. Uh, so make sure, if you do not have this down, if you don't know what all of these things do, ask me questions, I will answer your questions, go over this, make it a few times, play with it, get to know it, because you're going to use it a lot. So now we're going to go ahead and go to our lime outside. Now this one's a little bit easier than that one, we're just going to add an image texture. And I have another picture for this one. 
You can find these lime hole and lime outside pictures on cgtextures.com. That's free textures that you can get on there. Just type in lime or fruit or something. I don't remember what I typed in. It's been a while. But uh, you can search around and find it in there. Not too, not too difficult. Okay, let me go ahead and open the... Where's it at? Lime outside. And I want to scale this up to make our bumps much, much smaller. So as you can see, they're stretched and quite, quite big, quite big. Let's scale that way up. Man, it is still huge. Hmm. Uh oh. Hold on, what did we do here? We misassigned something here, didn't we? Oh, okay, we got the wrong UVs on here, don't we? Yeah, control Z on that. Okay. Let me uh, deselect all of that here. There we go. Selected my lime outside. That's what I, that's what we did wrong here. We, we had the wrong UVs over here. So let's go ahead and scale this one up. Ah, now we're changing. Now we're looking better. All right, that looks pretty good right there. So now that I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and do exactly what I did with the... No, I don't even need that. I don't think... I don't even think I have the normal maps for these. Let me see. Lime outside. Da, 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 da. Nope, we don't need it. We're good. If you wanted it to be just a tad bit more realistic, you could make the normal and specularity maps for the outside of the lime. I just thought it really didn't need it. It looks pretty decent already. Uh, the idea is we just want to make sure that this outer rim has a little bit of that outside lime look. And the inside is looking really, really good. So, let's go ahead and tab out of edit mode, hit that slash key, bring it back to our image, and we're getting very, very, very close to being done. The last thing that we need to do is we need to add the condensation to the outside of our glass. So for this, I'm going to hit 2 on my keypad, not on my numpad, but on my actual, I don't even know what you call that, number, number row. That's just going to move me to layer 2. You could come down here and click this layer 2 if you wanted to as well. And for this one, I just want to add, uh, what do I want to add here? Let's add a plane. I'm going to go to my top view, tab in edit mode, make sure I'm in vertices select mode. Just want to like move these, oh, I messed that up. I just want to move these vertices around a little bit, a little bit. Something like that, sure. Tab out of edit mode, because now what we're going to do is we're going to add a solidify modifier. And we're going to way increase this. Let's try 0.1, is that too much? Actually, that's too little, 0.15. Still maybe too little, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, that looks good. And now that we have that, we're just going to add a subsurf modifier. Set that to one, smoosh at it, da -da, we have a water droplet. That was super easy now, wasn't it? Now all we're going to do is shift D to duplicate it, tab into edit mode, just start moving those verts around. We just want these water drops to be a little bit different than each other, right? If you want to grab the whole thing, scale it just a bit. Looking good, shift D. We're going to do this about five times. I think I did about eight times for my actual image that you guys saw. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're not going to spend that much time. Looking good. Shift D. Going to grab this vertice here. We just want our drops to be different from each other. That's all. Not looking for anything super fancy here. 
just make little drops. <coughs> okay, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now that we have all five of them, what we actually need to do is we need to change these origin points. So I'm gonna grab the origin point somewhere right about there in the middle and grab this right down at the bottom and in the middle and yeah, we gotta do that for every one of these unfortunately grab that in the middle here grab it in the middle right here and we're gonna grab this one grab that on the Z Hopefully I haven't lost any of you guys during this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, do not be afraid to ask me. I'm on, uh, I'm on YouTube just about every day checking to make sure that you guys haven't commented or anything. So I will get back to you if I can answer your questions. And if I can't answer your questions, I will try to point you somewhere that can answer your question. I try to make these for people that are kind of like me where I'm not really a professional, but I'm not really, I'm not definitely not a beginner. I'm a little further than mediocre <laughs> it's kind of confusing to figure out where I'm at but there's really not a whole lot of tutorials out there for people like me where I really don't want to watch three hours of a video to make an entire scene I just want to make my own scene and I want to find tutorials for stuff that'll work for my scene anyways we got this down so now what we want to do is shift and right click on all of these drops and control P. That was not correct. Do not click anything with the control P. Nope, not Alt P. Shift P. Nope. What am I doing? It's control G. Control G. Not, not making a parent. We're making a group. Control G. Over here in the bottom, bottom left corner. I'm losing my mind here, guys. I just pointed at my computer screen like you could see me. Anyways, for the for this name box over here. We just want to type in, uh, like, water. That'll work. And let's go ahead and deselect those. Hit the one on your number row to go back to the first layer. I'm going to select our beer bottle. And something that we want to do is tab back into edit mode. And let's select these faces here all of these faces so let's go back into wireframe mode now up here in the vertex tab we're going to add a new vertex group and right here where it says weight we want to make the weight zero and assign and we can tab out of edit mode hopefully that worked let me go to my vertex weight paint mode no it didn't okay so select the entire bottle Put your weight all the way at one and assign. And then we'll go back and we'll grab the bottom faces of this bottle here. Put our weight down to zero and assign. Aha, there it goes. <clears throat> so this red part of the bottle is where we're going to get condensation. We don't want the condensation drops at the bottom of the bottle because it's going to look weird. It's going to be jagged coming off the edge of the bottle. It's not going to look like real condensation. We just want it towards the top. Actually, we might even deselect this uh, mouth of the bottle. Let's go ahead and do that while we're thinking about it. So make sure your weight is at zero and click Assign. And there we go. So all the red parts are where we're going to have condensation. And it looks pretty darn good so far. Uh, yeah, I think that's about right. So obviously you know what's coming next. Go back to my object mode. We're going to add a particle system. New hair. Whoa. Crazy, right? Click on your advanced. We want to turn on random instead of jittered. I like to turn off the uh, even distribution as well. Some people do, some people don't. Who knows? Anyways, we're going to go all the way down to render settings for our particle. Click on group. We're going to select our water group. Ta-da! Now you see it's, it's putting it in places we don't want it. 
and that's because we need to come down here to vertex groups and for density click group okay that's not the best seed that I've ever gotten <laughs> so let me go all the way back up here to the top this button right here is going to select the seed which is just going to give you a random distribution of your condensation yeah it's good enough so obviously these uh, water droplets are pretty big so let's go ahead and turn the geometry down something right about there looks good we're going to click on rotation and let's see this is always the biggest pain for this whole thing I'm trying to figure out how to get these things to look right sometimes they rotate right sometimes they don't depends on like how you put them down on your other layer and, ugh, such a pain Velocity here, global X, whoa, global Y, global Z. Wow. <laughs> okay, well let's uh let's turn down this number here to something like two hundred maybe. And I think what we're gonna have to do is go back to this layer. No, they're totally all laying down. Why is that not why is that not turning out properly? Faces. Da, 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 da. Oh, I hate these. Velocity hair. They're not wanting to lay down flat on the bottle. And honestly, for condensation, that is actually not terrible. That is not a bad thing. Uh, you just want to make sure that your emitter geometry is turned way down. Uh, now, one last thing that we do have to do is we have to go into our um, water droplets here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to apply our glass. Boop. 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 Boop boop and that's everything all right go back to my default here go back to my first layer and if you want to take a look at my particle system one more time even though it's not the best particle system ever I've got 200 it's on hair selected advanced I'm on uh, seed six I unselected even distribution, pushed random. Emitter geometry is at 0 0.540. You guys might have to mess with the emitter geometry. You're probably not going to be the same scale as mine is. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Rotation is on. I have that set to velocity hair. And I have that set to negative 1. I have the render setting to group, water, and vertex groups to default, or density, group. Hopefully, you guys kind of followed along with that. I didn't explain too much of what I did. Particle systems are a giant pain. I hate them because you always get different results. They never turn out proper. I just, they, they drive me insane. I absolutely hate particle systems. Anyways, we are all done. So, let me go ahead and position my camera a little bit here. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a render and see what we're looking like. Make sure we didn't miss anything. I'll go ahead and render that at 50. No, I'll render that at... Let me give that a good 500 ringer. And I'll see you guys back here in a second. All right, guys. So this is what I came out with. Um, it's good, but it's not great. The condensation is just, it's not enough. Uh, it didn't come all the way down the bottle like I really wanted it to. Everything else looks pretty good. So let me go in here. 
and show you what I did to increase this a bit. I clicked on my bottle and I added a subdivision surface modifier and placed it right after my solidify but before my particle system. Now to get that to apply to my particle system you have to go down here to your vertex vertex groups and you have to click it off click it again and then I went and increased the number back to 1000 which gave me a lot more water droplets and then I messed with the seed one more time just to try and get something that looked like it was coming down the bottle but not too much uh, let me see if there's anything else with that Uh, da, da, da. Mm -hmm -hmm. It is not wanting to change very well. Oh, because I'm at 20, that's why. Okay, let me see here. Oh, that was a decent one right here. So that gives me a lot more of the water droplets on here. You can play around with this. You can go a lot higher if you want to, like a, I don't know, 5,000. Obviously, that gives you a lot of them around here. Let's see, definitely not volume, definitely not verts. Keep it on faces. Maybe keep that even distribution on. Actually, that kind of makes it a lot better. So let me go back to a thousand, <coughs> and let me mess with my seeds just a little bit more. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, this one looks okay. So now that I have that, let me... One last thing I want to do is I want to actually rotate my camera on the x-axis downwards and pull it up on the Z so I'm getting like a downward angle at it <coughs> instead of that upward weird angle. And let's go ahead and give that one more render. Okay guys, so this is pretty much our final product right here. Um, if you want to mess with these particle systems just a little bit more, make it a little bit more realistic, that's fine. I don't want to spend forever on this tutorial going over it. Um, the particle systems are just, they're kind of a pain in Blender to work with. You just got to tweak them and tweak them over and over and over again until you get something that looks really, really great. Um, but the principles that I taught you here today should be enough to get you started and get you at least knowing what to look at and what to tweak in the particle system to make this look stupendous. I don't know why I use that word. Anyways, uh, you can see we have a nice glossy label. Our bottle is shining very nicely. We're getting a gloss on the outside from the lighting. We can still see our foam. Uh, our line kind of looks a little small. I might have increased the size of that just a tad bit uh, if I was going to put this in a scene. But that is pretty much the product that we're looking for. So if you are interested in making the beer bottle, that would be an add-on to a scene, or even if you just want to make it and put your studio lighting around it and make it, make it look nice and beautiful, I don't know, change the color, make it look alien, put an alien label on here. Uh, really, the only things that you are going to have problems with is making the foam texture and the label texture and both of these things can be done fairly simply in GIMP or Photoshop or whatever you want to make it in um, <clears throat> or you could always go to my website at caseyunderhill.com that's c-a-s-e-y u-n-d-e-r-h-i-l-l dot com I have the entire beach scene that I'm giving tutorials for each individual object and the entire scene uh, go check it out. It's five bucks. You can have all the textures, all the files, all the models, everything that you want from the scene, uh, from all of these tutorials, or you can just make your own. Uh, I do it so that you don't have to pay, but if you want to, you can help support me, uh, you know, help support the Blender artistry. If you like the tutorials, then, you know, I don't know, give me a little bit of cash. <laughs> Buy me a computer that doesn't suck or something. I <laughs> Anyways, I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. hope you guys learned something great. Uh, if you make this tutorial and you come up with a really great result, go ahead and post it. <clears throat> I'd really like to see it. Thank you guys for watching.